In today's video, you get a double feature. That's right, a five channel and a 3000 watt monoblock. The sponsored video notification you see means down for sound paid to have the amps tested and shown here to you guys, but this is not an advertisement. I'll do my normal test and provide feedback as I usually do. And since the video is so long testing two amplifiers, I will leave a video index listed below and in the pinned comment if you want to skip around. So let's get started. The five channel Mini Max is up first, currently priced at 259, available in 10 different colors. Ratings are 80 by four at four ohms, 120 by four at two ohms, 260 by two bridged at four ohms. And for the sub channel, 250 at four ohms, 400 at two ohms, or 500 at one ohm. Also requests an 80 amp external fuse that is not provided. As you can see here with the box, Sound for Sound goes above and beyond with their graphics on the box is so cool. Let's get it open, take a closer look. Of course, up first is the owner's manual, which covers this model, the 1005 Mini Max 5 channel, talks about all the features and specs. You also get a nicely lengthened bass remote cable there. It's like a Cat5 cable. And then we have our favorite bass remote that looks like a miniature amplifier. So cool, aluminum. It has the volume knob, power protect, clip light, also cycles between temperature and voltage on the front. Connects to that Cat5 cable very nice. Also matches the color of the amp now. Of course, there are a couple of what the hex wrenches in here so you can tighten up your terminals. Then we have three separate pigtails to RCA connectors for the inputs of this amplifier. And speaking of amplifier, let's take it out of the bag so you can take a closer look. Check it out, the MM1005. Nice looking amplifier. This one is in the bright red anodized finish. Has a down for sound logo laser etched onto the top of the heat sink, as well as a model number here at the bottom, the MM1005, signifying 1000 watts over five channels. Let's take a look at the end of the amplifier here on one end. You can see we got a lot going on, including the three different connections here for the pigtails to RCA adapters. And of course here I'm gonna show on the four channel amp how this works, just plug them in and then you got your RCAs. We have channels one and two settings, gain and high pass filter. Then if we move down the amplifier, we'll see channels three and four settings. It has gain, but it also has low pass and high pass settings. So that means you can band pass the channels here on this amplifier if you'd like. Then at the bottom, we have the channel five settings, including gain, subsonic, low pass filter, and the remote connection for the remote bass knob. Speaking of, we'll see it here powered up. You see what it looks like with the nice display. But let's move to the other end of the amplifier. We'll see we have the power terminals, which accept four gauge here for power and ground. We also have 12 gauge for remote and we have a power protect and clip light. The clip light there is for the four channels. Then we have the outputs here. Channels one, two, three, and four are across the top and bottom. Then channel five is on the far right side, vertical. If you want to bridge the amp, it's channel one positive, channel two negative, channel three positive, channel four negative. Overall, the amp is not very big in size as you can see here, I'm showing it, holding it. But let's get to the actual dimensions. 12.2 inches on the long side, 4.8 inches on the width, 2.2 inches on the height, millimeter equivalents are there as well. As stated previously here, for four ohms, it's rated 80 watts by four on the four channel section. That's what we're going to start off our test with. Let's get the amp all hooked up connected and powered up. You can see the protect light comes on, power light comes on, then the power light stays on. We have all the channels connected, so let's go. This here's my favorite part. Amdino's connected, let's go here. Four ohms, four channel rate of 80 watts by four at 14.4. Certified first at one kilohertz. Let's see what we get here. And the test shows right at 100 watts, a little over 100 watts per channel times four. Certified. Now let's turn the voltage down because a lot of times you guys ask for lower voltage. So let's try these four channels with lower voltage. There you go. About 82 watts times four at 13.28. Now let's switch over to the dynamic test. We're going to skip the uncertified test. We'll show those on the result page when we finish up. Just don't want to bore you guys with too many different tests. Here we go. Dynamic around 94 watts times four right at 14.4. Let's switch over to two ohms at four channels. It's rated 120 watts by four. Certified test first, one kilohertz. Let's see what we get. Can we get that 120 by four? Oh yes, we're about 138 or so average per channel. We're gonna turn it down again, the voltage, because of course 
Not everybody can hold that strong 14.4, so let's start off at 13.6. And there you go, 121 by four at 13.14, very nice. All right, let's uh, switch over to the dynamic test here, four channels at one kilohertz. And there you go. So over 150 watts per channel times four. It's closer to 160 actually. <laughs> Bumped up the voltage there at the end because thanks, thank you lithium, but 14.54 volts, we got about 160 by four. Now let's bridge channels one through four using the setup here shown on the screen. And we're, of course, we're still gonna have the sub channel loaded down when we do the test. It is rated 260 by two. I'm not sure why it's not 240 by two. Anyway, that new math gets me every time. Let's try certified here, 1% distortion. And there you go. We're about 275 watts times two average. We'll crank down the voltage once again, because we know some of you just don't have voltage that you need. If you drive like a Honda Accord, they start off about 13.8. So here you go, about 230 watts times two at 13 volts. Now let's try dynamic, sending the pulse tone into the amplifier. And here you can see, nicely powered over 300 watts. In the mid 320s or so average 14.6, our voltage is strong once again, but very impressive. Now let's switch over to the subwoofer channel. Try this out, we're gonna do 40 hertz test on the sub channel. We're gonna start with four ohms, it's rated 250 watts. Some people are gonna laugh, say 250 watts, that's all. This is a small amplifier designed for a very simple system upgrade with somebody who just wants a little bit of extra bass. So let's try it out here. Four ohms certified at 40 hertz on the amp dyno. Let's see what we get. Rated 250, we get 290 at 14.3. So even under the voltage there, we still got the rating. Let's turn this voltage down though, once again, for those who are lacking in their voltage and try it certified at four ohms, 40 hertz. We still get 255 at 13.12, and that's with the front channels being loaded as well. So very cool. What about dynamic? Here on the sub channel, voltage is a little bit lower, 14.2. We're still getting 290, 40 hertz dynamic. Looks good. Now let's switch over to two ohms. There's a rate of 400 watts at 14.4. Here we go, certified test at 40 hertz. Can we get the 400? Right at it. <laughs> 401, 14.2. So for some reason, I did not do a low voltage test at two ohms, but I know I did one at one ohm, so you'll see another low voltage test in the next one. Here we go dynamically, about 439 at 14 volts. Again, all the channels are being loaded down, so that's impressive. Now let's switch over to one ohm. It's rated 500 watts. Can we get the 500 watts certified at 40 hertz, which is a little under 14.4? Yes, 537 at 14.3. But we're gonna crank the voltage down and show the quote unquote real world numbers for those who can't hold strong voltage, even though the sample only requires about an 80 amp fuse. There you go, 427 at 12.68 volts. So if you only give it about 12 volts, it's about 400 watts on the sub channel. Uncertified up to clipping, we're closing in on 600 watts, 582 at 14.2. Dynamic sends the pulse tone into the amp. This amp has got the dynamic, so check this out, over 700 watts, 724 at 14.57. Here are all the results of all the amp dyno tests, including the ones you didn't see, the 8 ohm test, and some of the others, the uncertified test. The thing I would tell you overall, amp performed well at spec or above, and this is a simple five channel amplifier designed for those who just want a single amp and just a little bit extra bump, doesn't have a real powerful sub channel, but overall perform well. Also wanna let you guys know, I have upgraded to the wire ferrules as you requested in the past. Thank you, I actually love these things. They work well with this amp. So let's try it now with some speakers, see how it sounds. Here we have the Down for Sound MM1005. This is the Minimax five channel, hooked up to the six and a half inch Savard High Q, along with my ELAC bookshelf speakers, my favorites. Let's go ahead and pick out a song, Smokey's Lounge.
think sometimes people underestimate what a decent sub-channel, modest an amplifier like this can perform with either a small subwoofer or a single 10 or 12. All right, we've been out here jamming for about 30 minutes or so, pretty high volume. Let's check out temperature. Might be flickering there for you. 101 degrees Fahrenheit, 14.3 volts, 38 degrees Celsius, so not too bad here for the Mini Max. These amps have an acrylic bottom, but let's take it off so we can get a closer look at the amplifier's internals. Even though all the down for sound amps now have acrylic bottoms, I just take it off so it's easier for us to see the internals. Here we can see all of them also have notes, including the Hello from Dunnellan, Florida on this one. Let's look at the capacitors, 3300 microfarad, 25 volt. These are the caps on which are generic to the build house. 2263 volts there for the rails. And there you go, we'll do a fly over here of the amp so you can see all the goodies here. This one has a single transformer, so a single power supply for the entire amplifier. Let's we'll start off with the Pros here. It has a small footprint, rated power plus, full system amp, which will power your entire system if you have a basic setup, 10 color choices, three or five channel operation, reasonable pricing in my opinion, and great sound, had no issues with the sound quality at all. Subwoofer side sound well, so did the mids and highs. Things to consider, RCAs via pigtails, they just have to because the amp's so small. Requires five or six channel input. Wish they had a switch for two channel input. Has generic capacitors. Think of it as contractor grade for your amplifier. And no Bluetooth. Now most amps don't have Bluetooth, but hey, we can always wish, right? Now that's it for the first test. If you guys could take a minute here and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, smash me that thumbs up. I do greatly appreciate it. it. Helps my videos get shared here on YouTube as well as other sources and I do appreciate your feedback. Now let's move on to the king daddy of Mini Maxes, the 3000 KFD. This is a 3000 watt monoblock full range amplifier. Check shopforbase.com. That includes my affiliate code. I appreciate you using that when you can. This amplifier is currently $349.99. So let's get out of the box. We don't have to go through all that unboxing stuff because most of the down for sounds are the same. But here is the amplifier. As you can see, nice look overall. This is the blue anodized finish and MM3000 KFD laser etched there on the heat sink. Let's take a look at one end of the amplifier. This one's a lot simpler than the five channel because we don't have as many options with it being a mono block. Single input here for left and right via the RCA pigtails like we've shown before. Gain control, high pass filter with a 10X, low pass filter with a 10X, and the remote connection. That's right, this does come with a remote bass knob so that you can remotely adjust your bass. If you want to use this as a subwoofer amp, then uh, that's probably what most people use it for. I mean, 3,000 watts for your mids and highs if you're running a stunt wall, maybe. But holy moly, 3,000 watts is a lot of power for some mids and highs. As for dimension, 17 inches on the long side, 4.8 for the width, 2.2 inches for the height. Now this is a long amp to be a mini max in my opinion. You get kind of close to it being 17 inches long. Is it still really a mini amp? Well, I mean, if you're going to have 3,000 watts in an amplifier this narrow, I guess you're going to have to. 4 ohms is rated 1234, 2 ohms is rated 1888, 1 ohm is rated 3,000 watts, and they request a 250 amp fuse. We use the dual inputs here and they are not as close as they appear in that picture. That's a little bit of an optical illusion, but let's start off at two ohms. Amplifier is rated 1,888 watts. Let's try certified using the 40 hertz track. Can we get the 1,888? Very easily, 2514 at 14.48. So this amp is well underrated at two ohms. Let's try it uncertified. This time we're gonna go ahead and do the uncertified test because we didn't do the four ohm test. We will show you all the results here once we're done. 2581 right at 14.44. So we're talking almost 800 watts over the uh, rated number. Dynamically, we're still right around 2500, 2508 at 14 and a half volts. Now let's load the amplifier at one ohm where it is rated 3000 watts at 14.4. We're gonna show the test here at 40 Hertz. Certified test is always first. Let's see if we get the 3000 watts. Can we get it? 
Oh yes, 3288 right at 14.44. Now we're not showing lower voltage test here because honestly, if you're running a 3000 watt amp, you should have an upgraded electrical system and be able to provide it the juice that it needs. So we're not gonna be running 12 volt tests at 3000 watts here. Uncertified at 12, 14.27, we get about 3,450 watts. What about dynamically at one ohm? Here you go. Keeps climbing because our voltage is surging a little bit. We have lithium bank here. 3608, 14.36. Here are all the results, including the eight ohm test as well as the efficiency numbers. Efficiency looks good until you get to one ohm where it drops off. And that is not a shocker because when you load the amp down, you're going to cause it to be less efficient and it's going to be harder on the amp. Now let's find out what's inside. And just a quick reminder, those efficiency numbers are estimated. We are using a clamp, so they might not be exact just so you know that. Here we'll pull the acrylic bottom off. You can see there is a fan in addition to the two transformers here for the power supply and the large choke here on the other end. So this one is dual power supply. And on that input side, we do have 3300 microfarad, 25 volt, again, the caps on caps. These are generic caps that some of the build houses use. And we have the 1500 microfarad, 160 volt, 85 degrees Celsius caps as well. And hidden, well underneath here, you can see the 3K for play as your message. Let's start off with the pros, rated power plus. Full range capable if you want to run mids and highs at 3,000 watts, have at it. 10 different color choices, includes the base remote that has all the features. And the sound was great. We're not demoing it here because the video is already too long, but no issues at all with the sound quality. Things that could be better, RCAs via pigtails, again, because the amp is so small. Do you really need 3,000 watts for full range? I guess some of you do. Only has a single speaker output. Wouldn't be nice to have multiples. It's skinny, but it's long. <laughs> well, there you have my test and review of both the Minimax 5 channel and the 3000 watt mono version. Hope you guys enjoyed the test. Make sure you stick around to the very end if you want to see a couple of extra tests here on the blue Minimax. We're going to try it under one ohm. Not very smart, but we're going to try it anyway. Thanks as always for watching. Smash me a thumbs up. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. All right, the Minimax amps are not rated for under one ohm and should not really be used under one ohm, but we're gonna try this blue one, the 3000 KFD, to see if what we get at 0.8. And here you go, 3339 right at 14.48, that's certified using a 40 hertz track. We're also tried uncertified up to clipping. Again, you can check the voltage pull here. <laughs> this is not very smart. I mean, the current pull, over 400 amps pulled, 3,564 watts. Woo, good gracious. Dynamic, let's see what we get. Here we go, 40 hertz pulse tone. We are edging around 4,000 watts. 3936, is it gonna bump up? Nope, 3936 at 14.45. And finally here, we're gonna try dynamic at 0.67, not very smart. Not sure if the amp's gonna survive, let's see. We're over 5,000 watts and 5245, 14.69, it did survive, but not recommended. Thanks you guys as always for watching. Till next time, Big D, I'm out.